Good morning, everyone. How you doing? It's Paul here from Unusual Things. Now, this morning, I am in South West Wales, Porth Core Cemetery. Looks like a smallish one so far. Uh, we've come to find the final resting place of Steve Strange. Do you remember him? Massive icon from the 80s. Um, help so much with the new romantic movement and so forth. I'll tell you a little bit more about him real soon. Now, if you are a fan of Steve Strange or any of the bands that he played in or the music that he liked, uh, or the music that he played rather, then please leave your comments down below as always. And if you do like that video, make sure you give it one of those. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. If you want to, of course, you don't have to. Um, but ask the regulars, I think they like it. I think they like to get involved. Uh, and it's always good. What's great is on the premieres, uh, where we have a, a new video out, I try to do a premiere every time so that you guys can get involved and that we can all chat. And uh, um, I try to make time for each and every one of you by, even if I just say hi, you know, it's just an, an acknowledgement of you being there and a thank you. Um, so yeah, and of course, if you, if you like the channel, then subscribe and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, um, we'll get on with it, shall we? I'll tell you a little bit now about Steve Strange. Stephen John Harrington, 28th of May 1959 to the 12th of February 2015. Known professionally as Steve Strange, was a Welsh singer from the late 1970s. He was a nightclub host and promoter. He became famous as the leader of the new wave synth pop group Visage, best known for their single Fade to Grey, quality tune, and was one of the most influential figures behind the new romantic movement of the early 1980s. Steve was born in Newbridge, Carfilly, Wales. His grandfather moved with his family to Aldershot, Hampshire, where his father was serving in the British Army as a paratrooper. The family moved back to Wales and lived in Ryle, Denbingshire, I think I've said that correct, on the north coast where his parents bought a large guest house and opened seafront cafes. His parents divorced and Harrington moved back to Newbridge in South Wales with his mother, where he attended Newbridge Grammar School. The school merged with a secondary school to form Newbridge Comprehensive School a year after he arrived there and he subsequently lost interest in all subjects but art. After attending a Sex Pistols concert at the Castle Cinema in Caerphilly in 1976, Harrington befriended the bass player Glenn Matlock. He then arranged gigs for punk bands in his hometown and befriended Jean Jacques Bernal of the Stranglers before leaving for London. Here he worked for Malcolm McLaren and formed a punk band called the Moore's Murderers with Sue Catwoman. Additional members included future Pretenders frontwoman Chrissy Hind, future Clash drummer Topper, Topper Heden, future Psychedelic Furs drummer Vince Eli and the kid who was formerly in Adam and the Ants as Mark Ryan. They recorded a song called Free Hindley. After several gigs, the band split up early 1978. Later in 1978, Harrington briefly joined the punk new wave band The Photons, originally from Liverpool, as a vocalist and co-songwriter at the behest of David Littler, ex-Spitfire Boys. The band were managed by punk impresario Andy Chesalki. Shortly after leaving The Photons and using the alias Steve Strange, Harrington joined Visage with Rusty Egan and Majure from Rich Kids, Bill Curry from Ultravox and Barry Adamson, John McKeoch and David Formula from Magazine. Intended as a studio-based side project, they signed to the small label Radar Records and released their first single, Tar, in 1979. The single was not a success, but the following year, Strange appeared in the video for David Bowie's number one hit, Ashes to Ashes, a song which helped to propel the new romantic fashion movement into the mainstream. Later that year, Visage signed a new record deal with major label Polydor and released their second single, Fade to Grey. The single became a top 10 hit in the UK and several other European countries, reaching number one in Germany and Switzerland. As the public face of the band, Strange shot to stardom in Britain and other parts of Europe. Visage enjoyed a string of hit singles and two hit albums before later commercial disappointments led to their breakup in 1985. After the dissolution of Visage, Strange formed the short-lived band Strange Cruise with Wendy Wu, formerly of The Photos. The group signed with EMI Records and released two singles and an album in 1986, though failed to gain any chart success. In 1978, before their success with Visage, Strange and Visage partner Rusty Egan began to make a name for themselves as a nightclub host and DJ respectively. They began organising Bowie nights on Tuesdays at Billy's Club in Soho before taking over Tuesdays at the Blitz Wine Bar in London's Covent Garden. 
in the 1979, which became the iconic Blitz Club. Adhering to Stranger's strict door policy, admitting only the weird and wonderful, the club took off and became an essential location in the rise of what would become the New Romantic movement. Stranger's door policy was so strict that he famously once refused admittance to Mick Jagger, though Strange would later claim this was because the club was filled to capacity on the night in question and they had already been warned about breaching fire regulations. Strange was portrayed in Boy George's 2002 stage musical, Taboo, which reflected on the London club scene of the mid-1980s. During the mid-1990s, Strange promoted nightclubs at the Emporium Nightclub in Soho, London, and in 2005, he appeared in Channel 4 documentary called Whatever Happened to the Gender Benders, which reflected on the advent of the new romantic movement of the early 1980s and the prominent roles that Strange, Boy George and Marilyn each played within it. In November 2006, he took part in and went on to win the BBC reality series for children in need celebrity scissorhands. He returned to the show in 2007 and 2008 as assistant manager, image consultant in that role. He was in charge of the catwalk showing all of the best haircuts of the series and also people that was dressed in 1980 styles clothing and makeup. In 2008, Steve Strange and Visage 2 keyboardist Sandrine Gurio made an appearance in the BBC drama series Ashes to Ashes, which is set in 1981. They performed the song Fade to Grey in a scene set in the Blitz nightclub. In 2009, he and Rusty Egan appeared in Living TV's Pop Goes the Band, a series which pop stars from the 1980s are given a complete makeover in a return for a one-off performance. The Visage episode aired on the 16th of March 2009 and was the first time that the two men had spoken in over 20 years. The episode focused, like others in the series, more on getting them fit in the gym than the current state of their relationship, though they appear to get on well enough in the show. At the culmination of the episode, they performed Fade to Grey. In 2010, Strange was portrayed by actor Mark Warren in the BBC programme Worried About the Boy, a dramatisation of Boy George's rise to fame. Although the programme was set in the early 1980s, when Strange was in his early 20s, Warren was 43 at the time of the production. In January 2011, he and Rusty Egan reopened Blitz Club for one night, with performances from Roman Kemp's band Paradise Point and electro-punk artist Quila Constance plus DJ sets from Egan himself. In January 2013, Strange appeared on the Channel 4 News discussing the forthcoming release of David Bowie's album the next day. In 2014, he collaborated with Italian synthwave producer Botin on the song Poison Within. In his final years, he lived with his family in the South Wales seaside town of Porth Court, and for many years, Strange was addicted to heroin, and in later years, he suffered a nervous breakdown. In November 1999, he was arrested for shoplifting. He was caught stealing a Teletubbies doll for his nephew. In court, he was found guilty and given a three-month suspended sentence. The British media publicised the case of a pop star who had fallen on hard times. In 2002, Strange published his autobiography, Blitzed, in which he spoke openly about his career, his heroin addiction, his nervous breakdown, his sexuality, and his attempts to get his life back together. On the 12th of February, 2015, he suffered a heart attack at the age of 55 whilst in Sham in Sheikh in Egypt. He died later that day in hospital. Spandau Ballet, who also started their musical career in the Blitz Club, founded by Strange, dedicated their performance at the Sam Remo Music Festival later that night to Steve Strange. The family held a high profile funeral in Porth Corps, which was attended by many prominent figures from the entertainment industry. His coffin was carried by Boy George, Jace Lewis, and Spandau Ballet's brothers, Martin and Gary Kemp. The funeral concluded with a burial at the Jubilee Gardens Cemetery, a heart shaped gravestone which the Steve Strange Collective paid for was unveiled in December 2015. So there's all the information there on Steve Strange. What a great guy he was, but I thought he was uh, very eccentric uh, and he done so much for the music industry of that time, you know, with the clubs um, and of course his own music as well, which was great. And it's a shame that um, he's no longer with us, of course. And I remember him in the um, TV show, The Salon or whatever, I can't remember what it's called now, but I remember him running around and that being crazy as always, which was great to see. Anyway, um, I've just been having a walk around. It's quite a small 
little cemetery, but it's beautiful as well. They're very open, you know, which is great. It's always nice to see, isn't it? But I've been having a good look around. I think I found it. It's so certainly a busy grave, bless. Always great to see people putting things down. Steve Strange, what a beautiful picture, look. Amazing. Steve Strange, 28th of the 5th, 1959, to the 12th of the 2nd, 2015, lies here. Pioneer of the new romantic movement, front man of Visage, king of the 80s club scene, fascinista and friend to all, loving son of Gillian Harrington, Loving brother of Tanya and devoted uncle to Carl and Connor, now at peace with the angels. Un, I did not fade to grey, moi. And then down in this part here, one man on a lonely platform, one case sitting by his side. Two eyes staring cold and silent, shows fear as he turns to hide. Ah, we fade to grey, wow. So there we have the final resting place of Steve Strange. What a great character. What a great man. Thank you, Steve. Bless you for what you did for the music industry um, and throughout the, the 80s and so forth. Um, I'm sure there's many of fans around the world, um, hopefully that will get to see this. And if they can't get here themselves, thank you from all those fans as well. Um, for your inspiration to the music industry and his character as well. What, you know, what I loved about the sort of 80s new romantic era, uh, you know, like the Night Spander Ballet and the rest, was the way that the guys just didn't care. They got their makeup on, you know. I know Bowie was doing it for years beforehand, but they just sort of, it just took off a little bit more in the 80s when uh, more people started doing it and it became more mainstream. Again, because of Bowie's influences, obviously. Um, but it was great, great to see um, people like Steve and the characters like him that were about in the music industry. And, and what I'm happy about is that, you know, I was born in the early 70s. So even though I was a kid, I still got to experience the 80s and growing up in it and how great it was. And, uh, you know, not only the music, but all the mad inventions we had at the time and all the new things that were coming out, like computers and computer games and the music and the adverts and everything like that on TV was just a very... Um, it's a nostalgic thing now as we look back at it, of course it is, but Steve Strange, what a great guy. Um... Yeah, so don't forget, leave your comments down below. Um, you know, did you ever meet Steve? Did you ever see him play? Um, did you have any contact at all or anything like that with him? Um, or you know, do you just love his music or what he influenced within the music industry? Leave all your comments down below because I like to read them and I like to hear your thoughts on it. Because when I do these videos, I know it's me giving my thoughts a lot of the time after I've read the information. Um, but it's important to hear your thoughts as well because, you know, we're in this together and I want to hear what you guys have got to say on these wonderful people that we see um, on our journeys. Anyway, that's it from Porth Call. I think I've said that correct. Is that right? Paul, of course, I think it is. Um, I always get pulled up. If I say something wrong, some people just go crazy. It's like they lose their over it, you know? Hey, you said that wrong. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. You're not going to lose any sleep over it. I'm going to say Paul, of course. So that's what it sounds like to me. It's been well worth it to see and pay our respects to Steve Strange there, of course. Anyway, I will see you all on the next one. Take it easy.